my family used to live in the countryside. When I was at school, and school would be out for the summer, I would often be in the house alone during the daytime. Usually I would sit up in my room reading books, waiting for my mum to come home from her part-time job. She would usually be back around evening time. One day I was doing my usual routine of reading upstairs, when I heard a noise coming from downstairs. It sounded like it came from the front door. I have always had a really good sense of hearing, so I was able to hear someone quietly open and close the front door. Now I wasn't worried at this point because I thought that it was just my mum coming home early. The house was silent. My mum always used to call upstairs when she got home. I started to think that it wasn't my mum down there, and I began to worry. My whole body went stiff. I couldn't move a muscle. I just kept thinking, what if it wasn't mum down there? There wasn't time to panic though. I forced myself to my feet. I opened my bedroom window quietly, so if something was about to happen, then at least I would have an escape route. Then I crept over to the bedroom door, which was already open, and I looked out of it towards the top of the stairs. I heard some shuffling kind of sounds. I remember thinking that it could have been a big cockroach flying around down there. In my young age, I couldn't fathom the idea that anyone besides the people who lived in this house would have the goal just to walk in. I had no concept of home invasions or burglars at that age. I decided to go downstairs to try and find the source of the noise. I thought that the sounds were coming from the kitchen, but there was no one there. I thought that it must have been just my imagination, so I turned to go back upstairs. And that's when I heard a creak. The door beneath the kitchen sink slowly swung open. I was sweating, but I wasn't sure if it was through fear or because this happened in the height of summer. I stooped to look inside the cupboard. I saw a pair of legs in there and a hand gripping the sewage pipe. I didn't know what to do. I nearly collapsed. I uttered a small whimpering sound then quickly walked away. I was so panicked, I couldn't understand what I'd just seen. I got into a sliding wardrobe. I guess that's what you do when you're a child. When there's trouble or you're scared, you hide, right? I just sat in the wardrobe, with my knees pulled up to my chest, shivering. I guess I stayed like that for about an hour. During that time I heard no other sounds. The house was silent, but I stayed in the wardrobe. It was so hot. I was worried that there was a ghost in our house. I couldn't even open my eyes. I couldn't really process what I had seen in the kitchen. I just waited for mum to come home. I managed to convince myself that there was something on the other side of the wardrobe I was hiding in. I then realized whatever was out there could get my mum when she walked through the door. I couldn't have that. I couldn't let my mum be in danger. I don't know why I suddenly felt so courageous, but I did. I left the safety of the wardrobe. Thinking back on it, it was mad that I did that. Absolutely mad. I didn't see anyone in the house, though. Some drawers and cupboards were open, but other than that, there was nothing else out of place. I even checked under the sink, and the owner of those legs and that hand that I had seen earlier had seemingly disappeared. Satisfied that the house was now empty, I headed back upstairs to continue reading. I pushed my door open, and then stopped dead in my tracks. My bed looked different. It looked as if there was something in the bed beneath the covers. I then saw a foot slide slowly out from the covers. It was real now. There was someone here with me. 
Through teary eyes, I tried my best to step backwards and out of the room without making a sound. But I had been spotted. I saw an eye staring at me from the gap in the covers. The covers then slid down to reveal a man's face. There was an adult man in my bed, in my room. A man I hadn't ever seen before. I screamed and I just ran for the stairs. I heard the covers being thrown to the floor and the sounds of thunderous adult footsteps giving chase. I ran outside and shut the door. I ran into a bold guy passing by on the street and he helped me. He called the police for me. I was just an eight-year-old girl and it was all too much. The bold man restrained the intruder and he didn't let him get away. The police came very quickly and arrested him. It turns out that the intruder was a delivery person. I had accepted a parcel from him once. He must have known that I would be home alone. Or he must have thought that no one was home. He might even have asked me if anyone was home. And I might have told him that I was always alone in the daytime. I can't remember. I just hope I wasn't that dumb though. I asked my mum about this event again recently, and she said that all we got was a call from the delivery company's head office, issuing an apology. They then considered the matter closed. It was incredibly traumatizing for me. The neighbours said that they had seen him eyeing up our house. Even though I have no idea what he was planning to do, I think myself very lucky to still be around. If you consider the possibilities in your own head now, you might think me lucky too. My mum quit her job soon after this, and I wasn't left alone until I was older. We ended up moving houses too. This happened when I went to visit my grandparents, after not seeing them for a long time. It was a really nostalgic trip, I hadn't been back for years. When I was young I used to play in a park not too far from a shrine, so I took my nephew there to play one morning. When I arrived it seemed a lot smaller than I remembered, I guess that's what happens when you grow up, huh? It was amazing to see all my favourite things in the park, the swings, the roundabout, the seesaw, I couldn't help but smile. The sandbox had been there since I was in elementary school. I couldn't believe it was still there. There were five kids in there, working together and building sandcastles. It was summer vacation after all. My nephew ran to join them without hesitation. Ha, <laughs> what it is to be young. It's over before you know it, right? I watched him race over to the slide, slide down it, then repeat the process a couple more times. Something felt a little bit off though. I didn't know what it was, but I guessed that it was because I hadn't been back there for a while. I want to do this one next! My nephew shouted as he led me, by the hand, to the swings. I smiled at him, and I was happy to see him excited, but I still had this strange feeling of unease. I pushed him on the swing. I listened to him laugh, and I was staring off into the distance, not particularly focusing on anything in particular. I remember the way the slide's metallic surface was glinting in the summer sun, and the way the kids were playing in the sandbox. Time seemed to be slowing down. I had been idly pushing my nephew on the swing, not listening to what the kids were saying, shouting, or screaming about in the sandbox. I heard their voices without listening to them. Then something clicked and I found the source of my unease. I looked and listened to what the kids were doing in the sandbox. I could hear their voices now. I hadn't been paying attention to anything they had been saying since I got there. I saw them all in a small circle, crouching. They were peering down at something. Their backs were facing me. For all I know, they could have been like that from the moment my nephew and I entered the park. I shielded the sun from my eyes with my hand and watched them for a moment. They looked as if they had dug the sand up and were piling it in one corner of the sand pit. 
What the hell were they doing? Was this some new game? I wondered. Interesting, I thought. Luckily, my nephew was heading over towards the sandbox, so I followed and decided to strike up a conversation with the kids. Hey guys, I called as we approached. The boy closest to us replied, and then the others said hello. What are you guys doing? Seeing how deep this thing is? I thought that they were playing with a stick or something, maybe using it to dig or displace the heavier sand, but when I drew closer, I realized what they were holding was white. What was it? Some kind of thick stick of chalk or something? I asked the kid who was holding it what it was. Oh, this? It's a bone, he replied. I was shocked by how straight-edged his response was. Is that a bone? A kid's playing with bones now? I couldn't get my head around it. I took a closer look at the bone the kid was holding. This wasn't some chicken bone. It was long and thick, and it was burned in parts too. It was scorched of all its former flesh. Where did this bone come from? I heard myself ask. I knew I shouldn't have done this since I was the adult and they were children, it wasn't my place. I regret asking them, but their answer shocked me to my core. Oh, it came from a person. There are loads of these bones in the sandbox. Do you want to take one home with you? A kid replied. I didn't know what to do, so I just refused and grabbed my nephew by his hand and led him away from these creepy kids. He obviously couldn't understand at his young age what had happened, and why we were leaving. He started crying because he wanted to keep on playing. It's a weird story. I reported it to the police, but they never got back to me. Maybe they thought I was crazy. I used to play in that sandbox all the time as a kid. I really hate to think that there might have been bones in it back then. But the bones I saw those children holding didn't look that old, though. This is a true and mysterious event which happened to me and some friends one summer night a few years ago. Every summer, a couple of old school best friends and I get together, and we go on a little trip together. On the year this occurred, we had all decided on renting a cottage in the woods. It was going to be great. We were going to have a barbecue and a campfire. It was the usual crew, me and two friends. We're all females, by the way. My friend drove, and it took us hours to get there. It was already evening by the time we got to the cottage, and we were all hungry. We had prepared for this, though. We brought all our barbecue gear, and we were ready to have a feast. We had a great night, chatting and reminiscing by the log fire, and of course, eating way too much. Even though it was summer, the sun had already set by about 8pm. So that was our call to head back into the cottage. It was a real shame though. I suddenly had the urge to go to a hot spring. I know this sounds a little odd, but it's called an onsen in Japanese, and we love going to them in summer. I mentioned it to my friends, and everyone was on board. We got fired up, since we were all tired and full. Well, the cottage didn't have a hot spring, so we hit a dead end. Not wanting to slow down or waste the trip, I got my phone out and started googling, to see if there were any springs nearby, and we were in luck. There was one only a short drive away. We quickly packed some of our clothes and jumped back in the car, since we weren't familiar with the area. We were completely dependent on the car navigation system. The narrow roads were so dark since the forest was all around us. I didn't want to get lost out here. I was starting to lose faith in my idea. But then we turned onto the highway. The mood lifted in the car, and we were back to chatting and laughing. Right. The car navigation system interrupted. It was just the one word. I noticed this because the sat-nav system said, After 100 meters, turn right. I thought it was odd, but I didn't care that much. Another odd thing was that it asked us to turn while we were in a curve in the road. 
we turned back a little, and at the exact same point in the road the satellite navigation system said, Right. These country roads were very narrow. We didn't see the dirt road the first time, but spotted it when we doubled back. We obeyed the sat-nav and turned down the dirt road. The laughter and sense of excitement in the car ebbed away and was replaced by a sense of anxiety. This road, it didn't seem like it was leading us to the hot springs. The forest road just got steeper and steeper and darker and darker. I felt as if we were moving further from the town and from people. I started to doubt the existence of the hot springs. We ceased talking at this point. The air in the car was thick with tension. I wanted to turn back, but I knew that we couldn't. The road was only just wide enough for our car. There was no way we could do a U-turn. I started to worry. What might happen if an oncoming car came at us at full speed? Since we didn't know where we were, we decided that we would stop the car and check out our surroundings. I was amazed to discover that we were nearing a cliff edge. I had no idea that we had driven this high up into the mountains. I was lost for words, and so were my friends. Fear now had a grip on us. Forget the hot springs, we just needed to get back. Get back to somewhere familiar. No one said a word, and I'm glad they didn't because I was just panicking. We just stared at one another's faces in the dark and wondered what to do. We had no choice but to keep going forward, because the road was simply not wide enough to turn back. I knew deep down that we were moving further and further from the town, from the people, and from the lights. Just as our anxiety reached its peak, my friend spotted something up in the road ahead. The road widened ahead. Relieved, we sped towards it to perform the U-turn that would get us out of the mountainous woods. Then, the car's headlights illuminated a building. A building almost crumbled to ruins. A derelict and frightening looking place. And in that moment we laid eyes on it, we heard, You have arrived at your destination. Then, the power in the car went out. We were plunged into darkness. We panicked, but it came back on instantaneously. We turned the car around and headed back to the safety of the cottage. There was no hot spring. There was no way that creepy building in the woods could have ever been a hot spring either. I cannot forget that event. And we often talk about it when we meet up. Perhaps we were summoned or called by something in that abandoned building. This happened when I was in middle school. Back then, I was always heading home late, mainly due to club activities and studying. I would get home at around 7pm. On the day in question, I headed home with a few friends. It was a very hot and humid summer night. I remember the sky was dimly lit as the sun was setting. We reached the turning in the road. At this turning, my friends go left and I go right. I said my goodbyes to them and headed home like I usually do. I had to walk about five minutes until I reached home. It was always pretty dark on that road. The street lights are scarce. It's a pretty quiet road too. There isn't ever much traffic passing through. As soon as I left my friends, I heard the sound of a woman humming. I looked ahead and saw the figure of a woman standing by the road. I guessed that she was the one humming. I got closer to her. I was about three meters away. I then caught a glimpse of her face. I don't have the best eyesight. And it was dark, but I was sure that I was related to that woman. I thought that she was my mum's cousin. 
I would often see her on this road. She was always singing or humming, and I thought that she was a bit strange, but since we were related, I would always say hello to her when I saw her. As soon as I said hello, she stopped humming and looked at me. I thought she would say hello back, but she just grinned at me. I wondered if she didn't hear me, but then why smile at me? It didn't make sense. We weren't close and I hadn't seen her for a long time. Could she have forgotten who I am? I didn't want to make a fuss, so I just said, See you later. I turned my back on her and kept walking. As soon as I did, I heard her begin to hum again. I couldn't hear her footsteps though. For some reason, that really freaked me out. My back suddenly felt cold too. This was a strange feeling for such a hot day. I kept thinking about it, and I was beginning to work myself up. I remembered that I had played Kokuri-san with some friends. We didn't take it seriously and nothing creepy happened. But I hope I didn't invite something paranormal into my life and it was now attached to me for playing that dumb game. My mind conjured up these scary ideas and I mulled them over as I walked. My back felt colder and colder and then I broke out in goosebumps and eventually I started to shiver. Something was really wrong. It was like a feeling of sickness which I had never felt before. Suddenly I was aware that someone was behind me, about four or five meters behind based on the footfall. They were getting closer. Their pace was quickening. I didn't allow myself to panic. I think I lack the requisite skills to put in writing how I felt, but I can say with conviction that this moment, this journey home, was beyond frightening for me. Was my own relative chasing me down? The footsteps were now only about a meter behind me. The tension was at its peak. I couldn't stand it any longer. I turned to face my fate, and I saw no one behind me. My back still felt cold, and as I walked I felt as if there was a cool breeze blowing against it. I told myself not to run or panic. I pretended that I was calm when inside I was terrified. I knew that something was right behind me. I couldn't pretend anymore. Whatever was there was right behind me now. I couldn't handle it. I just ran for it as fast as I could for about 30 seconds until I reached the safety of my front door. I ran in the house and into my kitchen. My mum was there, making dinner. Hey, welcome home, she called. I was so relieved to be somewhere safe. Hey, what's the matter? You look pale. Have you been running or something? She asked. I was still in shock, so all I did was agree with her. I grabbed a glass of water and went to the bathroom to wash my face. I felt so exhausted. The sight of my own reflection startled me. I did look pale. I went and sat on the sofa. Did you see something strange? My mum asked. I think she could sense how shaken I was. I told her the truth. I said that I had been chased, and when I looked back, I couldn't see anything chasing me. I laughed as I said it out loud. It was a bit ridiculous. She laughed with me. Oh, by the way, I saw your cousin on the walk home. I haven't seen her for ages. A smile disappeared from my mother's face almost instantly. She looked really surprised. Yeah, I said hello to her, but she just stood there and grinned at me. It's pretty weird. What are you talking about? Don't joke. She passed away. She seemed angry. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but if it wasn't her, it was her identical twin. I mean, I guess that there is a small chance that it wasn't her. She was humming, you know, like she always does. 
My mum wanted to be alone after I said this. It was a bit emotional for her. I felt really bad that I had upset her. I didn't mean to. I was only telling the truth. After that, we went to my mum's cousin's former address, lit some incense sticks, and said a prayer for her. I wonder what makes her still remain on this earth, and why she chose to appear before me. Like I said at the start, we weren't really close. I don't know why she was chasing me, if that was her. Did something happen to her she wants to express? I have no idea. My mum told me at a later date that this happened on the anniversary of her death. I've never been told how she died or if she disappeared before she died. And I didn't want to ask. But I'll never forget those chills on that summer night. Something was right behind me. <laughs>